Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. Last week we started our home automation system based on PIR sensors and Sonoff switches. Both devices were operated by a firmware based on Tinkerman's Espurna framework. The brains of the system is a Raspberry Pi Zero and a script provided by Peter Scargill. And all communication is done via the MQTT protocol. Today we will bring these things together and dig a little into Node-RED and SQLite. I will also show you how you can monitor your Pi Zero from a web interface. So let's start. You remember I have two PIR sensors, one Alexa and two Sonoff switches. This is just a small setup, but we can learn a lot which can be used if we will extend this setup later on. Last week, we were able to send messages to a public MQTT broker. Because we do not want to leave our secure Wi-Fi network, we first set up our own MQTT broker on a Raspberry Pi behind our firewall. I did this in video number 126. I even posted an SD card image for a Pi Zero. You find the link in the description. So you have an easy start. If you want to use another Raspberry, you have to install a Raspbian and run the script of Peter. You also find the link in the description. So we have now a working MQTT broker. With the utility diet pi minus setup, we can give it a fixed IP address. You can also work with the name of your device, but I decided for a fixed IP address. I also decided to use my old Pi Zero without Wi-Fi because I will place the device close to my switch and I am able to connect it to an Ethernet cable. For that I purchased a $3 USB hub with Ethernet connection. It runs without any problems. I even can insert the keyboard in one of the three USB plugs if I want. So the IP address is 192.168.0.203 and its name is hub.local. Next we have to change the MQTT broker address in our PIR sensors and our Sonoff switches. This can be done by the web interface introduced in video number 127. Here we are also able to set the first part of the topics string. The device will automatically insert its board name and add things like Relay or Alexa. For the moment I do not use username and password for MQTT. Now we can start our Mosquito broker with the command Mosquito-V. When we power our devices we should now see a lot of messages coming. Each message has a topic and payload. This is because the devices publish many different topics to the MQTT broker. We can now subscribe to particular topics using mosquito-sub plus the desired topic. Now we only see the messages of this topic. If you use my SD card image, you have to issue these two additional commands now. Otherwise, later on you will see an empty page. Now we know that the broker runs and we can go on to the next step. We start Node-RED on our Pi. As soon as it runs, we can connect to it from a browser by calling the address of our Raspberry. Just type the IP address in a browser window and you get this nice menu. For the next step, we go to Node-RED control panel. If there is already something there, you can delete it. For this video, we start with a fresh flow. But how to get this flow? This is really easy. You go to my GitHub and open the file flow.txt with any editor. Then you select the whole text and copy it with Ctrl C. Next you go to Node-RED and import from clipboard. Paste the contents of your clipboard and decide if you want a new flow. Hit import and the miracle happens. You have now exactly my flow on your computer. Cool! By the way, you can do this with all sorts of objects you find in the internet. Now we start from left to right. The first node is a so-called MQTT node. 
You see this if you compare the color and the symbol with the palette on the left. You see also that it is an input node. Next we have to connect this input node with our MQTT broker. Easy. Because we run on the same computer, we just type in localhost and the Mosquito port is 1883. Fortunately, we only have to enter this once and can refer later to it. Because this node should connect to the main PIR sensor, we have to select the right topic. The client ID and the other tabs are not important for the moment. If you are interested in these, you can watch my video number 125. If you do not remember the topics, you just enter hash as topic. Then press done and deploy. Connected to this node is a so-called debug node. This node sends messages to the debug window. We can define how much information we want to get and we can switch it on or off. Now we see the topic and the payload. Zero payload means off and one means on. This is defined by the firmware of our PIR sensor. So the connection to our PIR sensor works. Next, I want that the lamps keep on for five minutes after my last movement. This is to prevent that the light goes off and on if I'm thinking. To achieve that, we can choose a so-called function node. I use a trigger node for this purpose. This has the desired function. It sends an on message to its output as soon as it gets any message at its input. After five minutes, it automatically sends an off message. We also select re-trigger. As we have seen before, the PIR sensor sends on and off messages. If we want that only on messages reach our pulse node, we can filter them with a switch node. Here I define that I only want the on messages forwarded. The off messages are suppressed. I could also add a second output for the off messages. The pulse node has a nice feature. It shows us its status with a blue dot. Later on, we will build such a feature for our own nodes. Another nice feature is the sound node. It helps, for example, during debugging, when you work with your sensor, and you cannot monitor node red at the same time. So, I added an audio output. James, please switch the bench light on. James, please switch the bench light off. In several languages, of course. Ich kriege mein Licht eingeschaltet. Ich kriege mein Licht ausgeschaltet. Now I can concentrate on my work and get acoustic feedback. How cool is that? By the way, you can look at these notes if you are interested on how you can achieve this function. We could connect the output of the pulse node directly to our light main node. Light main, by the way, is also an MQTT node, this time an output node and its topic is the topic of the Sonoff to switch the light on. But of course we want more. We want that we are able to overwrite the PIR sensors with either a dashboard or with Alexa. So we introduce a new input node, a dashboard button node. This function is simple. It creates or injects a one for on, a zero for off and an a for automatic, but it is not operated from this page. If we go back to our main page and select Node Red UI Desktop, we get a new window. Here we see for each of the nodes a button with a label. I also grouped the different buttons according their purpose. So I have now a small command center. But now we have created two different chains of command for our Sonoff switches. The PIR signals and the overriding signals from our dashboard. It is quite obvious how this should work. If we press the on or off button on the dashboard, we want that the lamp is on or off, even if a conflicting signal comes from the PIR sensor. 
Only if it is on automatic, we want that the signal is transferred directly from our pulse node to the lamp. But how can we achieve this? Here we need a few things. We have to use a fully programmable node and we have also to have variables which can store a particular status. The first is easy. We just take the empty function node. This node is programmable in JavaScript. So let's have a closer look. If we look at the new node, we see that it returns the message it gets. So we learn two things. The full message on the input is called msg and we can transfer a message to the output by returning this variable. Simple. Now let's look at such a message. To do that, we use our PIR sensor and the debug node. The only thing we do is to select the complete message. Then we see an object and its content, which we easily can refer to. You will see later on how. To play with that setup, I place the function node between the PIR sensor and the debug node. So if we want to refer to the topic, we use message.topic. So if we want to transfer the topic also to the payload, for example, we just write this small code. And if we test now, we see in the debug tab that the magic works. But very often the debug tab is clouded by many different messages. We have to find a better way. What if we could see important info in proximity of the node, like with a pulse sensor? Easy, if you know how. We just add this line of code and we now see the payload directly in our flow. Nice. But how do we get this overwrite behavior? Here we can add a few lines of code. If the overwrite variable is on, we want that the payload always is 1 and if off, it has to be 0. If the variable is auto, we transfer the payload without change from the input to the output. So we have to find a way to set and store the override flag. So far, we only had messages to work with. If the next message arrives, we lose the content of the former. If we look at our override node, we get sometimes a message from the always on button or from the PIR sensor and so on. To achieve our goal, we have to store the override flag every time a message from the dashboard arrives. And the override flag should not be affected by the messages from the PIR sensor. These lines of code do exactly that. Our dashboard buttons all include the word override in their topic. So we filter these messages and set the override flag accordingly. Alexa, main, off. Okay. Alexa, main, on. Okay. We could now go on to the next topic. But I do not want to omit telling you that Peter Scargill wrote a small article about variables in Node-RED. You can, for example, store global variables in one place and use them in another. If we store the results of the override flag in a global variable, we can use it in our second node. We will use this function in our data logger. From our previous videos, we know that Peter's script also installed the SQLite database. Here we want to store all events from the two PIR sensors together with the override flags. For that, we go to the main page and from there to SQLite Administrator. Here we create a database called Sonoff and add four fields. Topic, Payload, Timestamp, Override Main and Override Table. That's all here. We go back to our Node-RED tab and start with connecting the two PIR sensors to a function node. This function node is connected to a SQLite node. Now our function node gets all messages from the two PIR sensors and we have to read the two global override variables. Now we just have to bring all into a form in which the SQLite node will store it properly away. 
In my last video, I showed you one version to do that. Some of my viewers made a point that this method is not very secure. So this time I use a different one and hope it is better. The SQLite node needs a SQL statement as a topic and the field content as payload. So the SQL statement is insert into Sonoff and all fields of the database. At the end, we add a values template with the same number of question marks. And the payload contains the content of the variables in the right order. The rest of the code is easily understandable. It only formats the timestamp in a human readable format. And of course, displays the last update time as a reference below the node. Now everything is done and we can deploy the flow a last time. If you want to create a backup, you can export the whole content or only selected nodes into your clipboard. Then you paste it in a text file and you're done. Very simple too. And if you want to know how much resources Node-RED uses, you can go back to the main page and to the web administrator. Here you can do all the small stuff an administrator has to do. So summarized, we are able to control our two lamps by two PIR sensors. We can override their signal by either pressing a button on the dashboard or by talking to Alexa. We are able to use voice as an output. We were able to store a nice log in a structured database. And we even learned a few lines of JavaScript. For me, I see now in the morning if my PIR sensors were triggered during night. Then the usual suspect would be our cat called Dishka. Fortunately, we did not name her Alexa. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, then like. Bye.